Namaste everyone welcome to our YouTube channel Dr. Abhishek Kumar today we are going to discuss about the function of the middle ear before we begin the function of the middle ear we must know about the uh, structure of the middle ear so let's begin the topic of middle ear so we'll be drawing the external ear here right now this is the ear the outer surface of the ear you can see so this is uh, the external auditory meatus and this is pinna which is also called as auricle is a flap of elastic cartilage covered by a skin and this one is ear lobe lobule this is ear lobule it's a soft tissue portion and this is the external auditory meatus this is about 2.5 cm long tube in the temporal bone extending from the auricle to the eardrum this canal containing the sebaceous gland which secretes ser cerumen cerumen is nothing but the ear waxes and it also contains the hair this cerumen and hair prevent the foreign particle to enter into it and this is the external ear from here to here with the help of orange color pencil i am drawing the malus malus is meaning hammer the handle of the malus is attached to the internal surface of the tympanic membrane and this is tympanic membrane tympanic membrane is also called as eardrum is a thin elastic semi transparent conical membrane with an apex called umbo okay and this is a green with the help of green pen I am making the incus. Incus. So this incus, the malus articulate with the body of the incus, and this is a that's in turn articulate with the body of the stapes. This vibration. This all together malus, incus, and stapes called as ear ossicles. The vibration of the foot plate of the stapes. Which then transmit the vibration to the inner ear through the oval window. This is a oval window. Right now, I am making. This is a stapes in the oval window. And with the help of pink color pen, I am making cochlea. Cochlea means a snail cells is a, a snail shaped fluid filled coiled tube. Cochlea, and this is. A uh, nerve, cochlear nerve, which arises from cochlea, and with the help of uh, orange pen, I am making vestibular nerve. And from here, I am drawing a line. This shows the inner ear, where the stretching tube, which I missed, but in next diagram I will make the middle ear, and all the bony part the three ear ossicles are present and this is the internal ear where the cochlea and vestibular nerve and cochlear nerve is present so in next diagram we will see only the middle ear along with some part of the external and internal ear so in this diagram we will draw a parallel line this parallel line is tympanic this parallel line is external auditory meatus which shows the external ear or outer ear and this is i am making the tympanic membrane tympanic membrane is about 50 millimeter per square this is tympanic membrane made up of collagen and elastic fiber the inner surface is lined by the mucous membrane and outer surface is lined by the skin the apex this apex is called the umbo okay so this is uh, the handle of the malus which is attached to the internal surface of the tympanic membrane here i will write the malus and with the help of uh, again the green color pen, I am making the incus. And this incus, the malus articulate with the body of the incus here. 
and the stapes this incus articulate with the head of the stapes and which transmit the vibration to the inner ear through the oval window here we will draw a line the uncoiled cochlea this is uncoiled cochlea and this is oval window this is round window where this in oval window the foot plate of the uh, this foot plate will articulate and this is a scalar vestibuli which fill with the perilymph and this is a scalar media which fill with the endolymph this is a scalar tympani filled with the perilymph and at the apex of the cochlea the small opening called the helicotrema this is uncoiled cochlea this is the stretchin tube where air is present this is the tube filled with the air called stretchin tube and it is also called as pharyngotympanic tube which is about 4 to 5 cm in length and is connected to ear middle ear and with the pharynx and uh, you can say it also maintain the uh, pressure okay air pressure inside the middle ear you can see all the labeling of the outer inner ear everything on the screen and this complete the structure of uh, middle ear and now come to the function function of the middle ear now we saw all the uh, structure of the middle ear internal ear and external ear now we will see the function of the middle ear and uh, function of the middle ear this is called receives the sound wave so from external ear by tympanic membrane it also receive the sound firstly it received the sound from the tympanic membrane when once sound comes to ear it received by tympanic membrane and this is second function of middle ear is transmission of sound wave transmission of sound wave to the inner ear through tympanic membrane and ossicular chain so a transmission of a sound wave to the inner ear through the tympanic membrane and the ossicular chain and we'll see the uh, third function of the middle ear which is about the amplification this is called the amplification of sound wave the force of sound wave that strike the tympanic membrane increases the several time as it reaches the foot plate of the stapes and the oval window one reason is the surface area of tympanic membrane is 50 mm per square is larger than that of the oval window which is about 3 mm per square the ratio is about 17 is to 1 the total force sound wave exert on the tympanic membrane is transmitted to the oval window and it increases the pressure about 17 times okay and the second reason is due to the ossicular chain act as a lever the fourth function of the middle ear is equalization of air pressure you can see this equalization of air pressure is due to the uh, stretching tube on the previous diagram you seen the stretching tube which uh, maintain the air pressure in the middle ear okay and uh, it also contain uh, it also connected to the pharynx okay and in ch children the this stretching tube is shorter and due to which the infection the chances for infection are more in the children and this and this is the fifth function 
of a middle ear which protect this loud sound by activating the tympanic membrane okay we seen all the function of the middle ear and thank you very much to listen this video so patiently please do like subscribe and share this channel with your friend if you want to really help them and thank you very much subrat